my life was a normal christian where it was just a book job get up in the morning have my personal prayer study the word of god and try and share it around if you're going to seek god's word and seek his kingdom and seek his work you've got to be ready for trials keep searching for god in his word and do not give up god was testing me in a fire trying to refine me as fine as gold the evil one comes to rob steal and destroy so was it someone who was trying to attack my wife and my family and myself growing up in a catholic family and a catholic school going daily for sunday mass getting involved with parish life singing for church and singing for mass being an altar server was just a normal routine day after day and year after year it was nothing else but just studying the word of god and trying to know more about him i try my level best to put into practice in the word of god i had a very good job my wife had a very good job we had all our plans set we planned to buy a house in 2008 and we had all these things that god had blessed us with in 2008 when i thought everything was rosy in my life on that easter morning just after we finished singing for the easter vigil we planned to go for a nice holiday across the country having a long break we set out at night because i love driving at night because you don't get tired because of the light and the fatigue and i took another friend along with me with his family and we agreed to share that journey on the way because it was 800 kilometers away from home two families starting with my friend his wife and his son and my wife and my two children and myself this friend of mine who was driving but as we were driving during the early hours in the morning at 2:20 just 350 kilometers away from adelaide we had an encounter of a very traumatic accident when my friend who was driving lost control of the vehicle the car left the road went off road hit an embankment and overturned twice <laughs> bringing our life to a standstill The biggest miracle of that night it was that we were traveling full tank of fuel and the car did not catch fire This was 350 km away from Adelaide way out in the uh, in the outback where there was no phone coverage and there was at the dead of night there was no traffic on the road the only thing that i could think of was about the trucks moving cross country that could help us so that instinct i told her open the window or open the door and get out get a phone or go down to the nearest highway and flag the nearest truck down and they'll be able to help us and in that time i said i'm going to get out to see what i can do i opened the door and i stood out and all i could do at, at during that time was just praise and thank god so at the site of the accident i kept coming in and out of consciousness i knew the car spun and when the car stopped being a nurse how is everyone i knew we were in an accident i didn't know the severity of it i just wanted to know that the other family my kids my husband was safe that was my main concern i tried to move and i knew i could feel blood trickling down my head that's when i knew i mustn't move knowing and having the nursing background i knew that if i move it could be it could be disaster and that was and i thank god for that because if i did move i would be a quadriplegic i would have no sensations in my hands and my feet because i fractured my C2 C3 T3 T4 so they were crash injured and i checked that everyone was okay because my friend's wife she said yes they're all fine i asked how's my daughter and i remember telling her if anything happened to me to look after my child but at the same time i kept screaming to god to look after us during that time As I was looking around 
I could feel my left hand wasn't moving quite well. And that's the time when I see my upper humerus it was actually fractured in two. And that was the last thing I remembered because I actually called out and I was unconscious. The next thing I remember was these bright lights of the emergency vehicles. The rest was when I got up into the hospital. We were all admitted in the hospital. I had a fractured humerus. I had fractured my upper neck. The seriousness of our injuries were, was, was life-threatening. And as I was in the hospital bed, all I was doing was praying out to God and, and thanking Him. When this strange hand came and caught my hand and said, Brother, this is the name that will save you. The moment he said that, I grabbed his hand. I said, will you come, to, come over here and pray with me? I never knew who he was. And he sat down with me and we prayed. And it was amazing. Then he had to let me go. He said, I have got to leave you because I've got to go and see your wife because she's more serious than me. And I'm the, and I, and I'm the doctor. I've got a doctor who's praying. And as he left my hand, he went. I, I, stepped, I slipped back into unconsciousness again. The doctor decided me saying, you've got a broken neck and you've got to operate. Do you want to go through with this operation? And then something struck me and I turned around and told the doctor, I believe that the power the doctor given to you is not yours, it's given by God. So I place my trust into your hands. So let's go ahead and have the operation. Everything was done. I was signed up for the operation. It was Monday morning when they took me in for my operation because they couldn't fix my hand until they fixed my neck. The accident left me really the worst of all. I had a full degloving of my scalp, so that means the whole of my scalp was ripped open. I had, so they had to take me, so they had to cut open the car to take me out because I was the worst injured from the lot. When I was at hospital, again, I was in and out of consciousness and I was just saying to Our Lady, just calling out Our Lady in Jesus' name. And the doctor said, at that time, fear gripped me, not knowing, because every time they kept telling me, can you move your legs? Can you feel your legs? Can you feel your fingers? And that's when I thought, I think this is something more, because they had put a brace around my neck. So I thought, oh, I hope I don't have a severe spinal injury. And the doctor who looked after us was the doctor of faith. And that was another blessing for us. Because of the injury of my, I had fractured one of my ribs, it had punctured my lung, and my breathing was getting down. So they had to put me onto, um, they, they intubated me because they had to keep that on. And then they had to repair my, uh, they had to suture me off. But because of the injuries of the C2 and because of the switches, I couldn't have any surgery. So I was put onto a halo brace, a brace that helped me not to move my neck. At that time, the thought that came was, I just thank God that it wasn't my younger daughter or my son. This is way beyond any understanding. Later on that day, I came to know that my little girl, who was going to be three that year, had fractured both her legs below her knees. This is something unbelievable. And even the doctors and even the paramedics and emergency crew couldn't believe that we had made it out from that car, which was so badly crushed, so badly damaged, and we were all out alive. I remember the time when they were doing the halo brace. Uh, they couldn't give me anesthesia, so they had to put four nails, two in my forehead and two at the back, uh, just with little local, and I know it hurt me so much because they had to drill it for the brace to sit on it. And I know I was just screaming the Hail Mary as loud as I could. So I think the doctor being there, who was in faith, kept saying, just scream out to the person uh, that you always do. And I really don't know why, but uh, I never doubted or never deterred with my faith, saying, God, I don't want to you know, trust in you. Probably also because we were all alive. Many people asked me, how do you sleep with a halo brace? Because the brace was 
right like that and it just had two steel rods coming out. So I had to rest on the steel rods to sleep. I couldn't put I couldn't move, so every week I had to go to the hospital. So there was like a sheep skin, so I couldn't bathe. So I couldn't bathe for six months. So there was a, a skin, like a, a skin that was there, and a sheep skin, and every time I go to the hospital, they'll remove that, then I'll just have a wash, and they'll put another one. So every time they moved, that moved. So I just sometimes wonder, how did we get this strength? But then, you know, I, I shouldn't say how because we knew that we had some, a very strong force there with us. Um, and that is not no one else, but our garden angel, Mother Mary. I, no, I never dreamt and I never ever thought that this would happen, no. But I don't wanna dwell on what we missed. I wanna share the blessings that we received, the friends we made, the friends that we go stronger with. Our family grew stronger. Our faith in God grew stronger. My kids, in all the pain, just moved from leap and bounds. And none of this would be possible if we didn't have that God, our Creator, watching us. Yes, we did have financial ups and downs. We lost a lot, but we gained because we believe in tithing. At that time, we saw the richness of that faith in that critical stage in their life you could see that the strength they were deriving was from God. And you could see the faith was so deep. They had no trouble just relying on His total comfort. And yes, we friends, all of us were there to support them. But what they were going through was, we couldn't help them in any way. And many a stage was there when we didn't, we were not, we didn't need to comfort them. They were comforting us. They were saying, yep, it's going to be okay, let's just do it, God will take us through this. Tithing was always emphasized and they always said, you have to give that 10% as per scripture said. And I made it the point every week, every month to give that 10% to the Lord. Even, even during the accident, God blessed us. I was blessed with, a, with an income protection with a company where I was paid a whole complete salary for the whole year. And the second year I was paid 80%. And in all these difficult times, there was nothing that was made less for us. We made sure our children had everything and God made sure that we had everything. There's one thing I would like to stress on. During the month of the accident in March 23rd, my son who was learning the piano at that time had to go for his piano exam. And as I used to train him up for his, for his exams, I wasn't there available because I was in hospital recovering. But his tutor, he took charge of my son and he said, Daniel, not to worry. I look after him. And for that exam, he had obtained a higher distinction. Don't ask me how, but here's God's word in truth that he will look after everything. And this is, this is God's word, which has come out of life, in our life, living it. And now God is actually telling me that his word is truth. And I quoted the scripture of, of Malachi, where God is testing us in a fire trying to refine us as gold. At least thinking that the same message was going to be applied to my personal life, where God was testing me in a fire, trying to refine me as fine as gold. John 10, verse 10, the evil one comes to rob, steal, and destroy. And then it dawned on me that this was no accident, but this was God's divine plan. In terms of that, they are a, a very good family, a, a, a family that prays together, a lot of faith in the family. The children are involved and are part of the church community there. Daniel does a lot of work in the church, his pastoral care work, visiting the sick, praying for the sick. He enjoys doing that work. And I think all that uh, has come about more so with him going through that whole journey of his accident and his recovery. I have seen it through my own eyes where the family has really devoted themselves to the church, to the community. They've helped so many other families through their testimonies, through their way of living. They've always been faithful and they've always been sure that the, the rosaries are said on a daily basis in the house. Uh, whatever is done is done in the name of Jesus Christ and that has just brought them inner happiness and it has enabled them to come, that faith has enabled them to overpower 
any financial issues that they've had in the, during the phase of these 10 years, um, any uh, emotional uh, that um, backlash they had to overcome, any physical pain that they have to come, any sentimental pain that they had to overcome. So there are so many pains that an individual goes through and this family has come together and allowed them to overcome it just through having faith in Jesus Christ and Mother Mary. The trust, the faith. Like I tell people, I don't worry about my finances anymore because we've never been in want. We were for three years without jobs. So three years, both of us were without jobs. Of course, yes, we did have savings, but then the government, Australia as the government looks after, we were looked after there. But that just didn't happen with a chance. Way back in 2011, I managed to secure my first job after the accident. I lost my job at Holden. My wife lost a job at the hospital because of her injuries. My life is, is a living and walking miracle. I managed to, to, to secure a job in 2011, but I think God had still something there in store for me. I tried to secure those jobs, but I couldn't secure a job. 2011, I worked for this one place for six months, jumped to another job for another six months, and went to another job for another six months. And every company that I work for, those companies don't exist today. So I don't know, was it me or is it God? I can, have, I can always say yes, it is God trying to tell me something that he needs me for his word and for his work in a much better, much stronger manner than giving my time to work. And one thing for me is we went through terrible times. We went through the darkest days of our life, not knowing whether one of us would survive, but yet we saw the hand of God in our lives. The love for God, the love for Our Lady is what keeps us going. And if anyone at any time goes through those dark days, you remember you have your biggest friend, your best friend, God our Creator. When I look back, and even when people look back at our accident, there's always one question I have been asked, how is it only your family was injured and nothing happened to the other family? And all these questions keep running through our minds till date. And all that we can say was, as the doctor did say, the evil one comes to rob, steal and destroy. So was it someone who was trying to attack my wife and my family and myself? Was it someone trying to stop the good work that I was doing for God and His kingdom in this country? That has made us more strong. That has made us more strong, that has brought us more vibrant out into, into, this, into this country reaching out in a much better and much stronger manner. After the great operation on my neck, the next operation was to be done on my hand to fix my hand. And because the humerus was fractured, there was no way they could put it in a cast. And all that you could do was have an open surgery, cut it open and put a plate to put it together. I think the critical part was basically at the Royal Adelaide Hospital there, where they had their surgeries and everything. But I think the more closeness and, and more of the faith we saw is when they went to rehabilitation. Both of them, Olivia and Daniel, had to spend a significant period of time in rehabilitation. So they were together in the same room. Uh, Father Sean was more their spiritual guide through that journey, strengthening their faith and their resolve that it will all uh, get better over time. And I think they made a tremendous recovery while at rehabilitation, and post that is when they returned home. I was devastated after the accident because for some reason, but I never knew then, I lost all movement of my hand. I lost movement of this hand that I used to play my guitar, and which was used, which is used to glorify God. And now it actually dawned on me, why this hand? And it came to pass that there was someone trying to stop me because stop me from this great talent of playing for the Lord and glorifying God's kingdom. But I had this one determination that if this hand is not going to function, I am going to start learning to play the guitar with my right hand, start fingering it with my right hand and start strumming with my left hand, which was all, all a new ball game to start again from scratch. But I called out to the Lord. I remember that one night as I was sleeping on bed, I cried out to God and I told him, restore me back to normal and I will go back proclaiming your word and reaching out to the people. Whatever is happening right, right now at this very moment, there's no accident. It's all in God's divine plan because he has heard, he has heard my voice. God, God is going to hear me and I, and I knew it. Exactly after six to eight months, I could feel slight movement of my fingers. I kept going to church 
I had a friend of mine who kept playing in, uh, and kept filling up for me. I kept the choir going. But in, in February 2009, it's the very first time, I picked my guitar up for church and I played it to the people's amazement. And Father Sean, who was saying the Mass, he made an announcement to the church that day. Well, my friends, have you noticed something? Daniel De Silva has played his guitar. For the very first time, after all these months, and I had a standing ovation, and I owed it up all to God, because it was His word that came to pass, cry out to me, and He will answer. And with great, with great difficulty, I played for that Mass, but with all determination, I said, no, this is not going to stop me. And ever since from that day onwards, till date, I still keep playing and glorifying God. And after what happened to us, our life has changed. I do not worry about finances. I do not worry about the other day. For I know we are looked after. And how blessed we are to have that loving God with us. In any trials, just go to Jesus. His mother's always waiting with her arms open for us. Oliver, my wife, turned on one evening and asked me, Daniel, you, you do so much for the Lord. You reach out to those people, you serve the church. Why has this happened to all of us? I had, I had no words, I had no words. But all I could do at that, at that time was to, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I told her, I said, Olivia, when you get out of this hospital, go back home and read the book of Job. Such an amazing person. And here, there was nothing else with Job, was the evil one having this great debate with God trying to see that if God takes out all, everything away from Job's life, how faithful is he going to be? But Job and all that remain faithful. And I take those words, words from the book of Job, and I can always say that the book of Job strengthened me during those difficult times to remain faithful to God. And what they bring with them is a real sense of family, family commitment, not just one member of the family, but a family commitment to the faith they believe in. And this has been a great inspiration. But then also the fact that um, when they went through, as the Silver family did, to um, the sadness and pain and suffering, they still have a great sense of joy and in wanting to give to others and challenging us each and every one of us, that no matter what life holds for us, that is our faith and a deep trust in God and um, in the Blessed Trinity and our Blessed Virgin Mary. In every moment and in, in, in every day of our lives, there's not a day that goes by where I, I can't stop reflecting on God's Word. I can't stop researching more, for, more on God's Word. All I want to do is, is to learn more and more about God because the Word of God is so vast. It's so huge, it's, it's, it's infinite, in other words, because our God is an infinite God. He's a God of infinite love, He's a God of infinite mercy, He's a God of infinite power. So that tells us that if you're going to seek God's word and seek His kingdom and seek His work, you've got to be ready for trials. You've got to be ready for difficulties. Your very own is going to discern you. Your very own is going to turn away from you. You're going to be left alone. Keep studying the word of God. Keep searching for God in His word and do not give up. I'm Bishop Eugene Hurley from the Diocese of Darwin, which takes in the whole of the Northern Territory of Australia. And I'm delighted that Shallow Ministry is now in a position to bring some of that good news to the rest of Australia and indeed to the world. Because we live in a world where the media is so influential, it 
dictates so much of our learning and our attitudes. And so it's so important that the good news of Jesus Christ has to be made available to all people because it's what we each need as human beings to enliven us, to make us more loving and indeed to bring about peace in the world. So it's this good news that the Shalom Ministry is trying to get across to Australia now. Let me invoke God's blessing upon the Shalom Ministry and all who work within it and all who are the subject of its good work. May the blessed Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon the Shalom Ministry and all who work in it and all their families may keep them at peace forever. Amen.